Hi, this is Kara from the Pure Rock Shop, and I'm here in the home and studio of vocalist DC Cooper in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, you're most known um, as the frontman of the Danish band Royal Hunt. DC, thanks for talking to us today. Thank you for being here. And it's Take very it. rare that I get to do a ri an interview in Pittsburgh. Yeah, anymore, so. you've taken time away from your home, so we appreciate this. Um, you know, it's hard to believe it's been like 20 years since we did an interview, and I can still remember. Sitting with you at Max and Irma's going through your <laughs> scrapbooks of old bands locally here in Pittsburgh. The Tongue Bandits, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's been, it's been quite a while. Oh, we shouldn't say 20 years. It was a while ago. It, yeah, it was a while ago. And, um, you know, one of the things that you were working on back then, you weren't with Royal Hunt at the time, you were working on your solo album and um, working with the guys from Pink Cream 69. So we just met up with them earlier this year and saw them for the first time on Monsters of Rock, which was very cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, or you have any plans to do anything with Dennis or anyone from the band in the future again? I'm always up for working with Dennis. Um, you know, most of the... You know, the second solo album is still in the works. <laughs> okay, that's been a while. Yeah, yeah, and I'll play you privately a couple tracks before you take <laughs> off. Um, but the biggest thing is, and I'm kind of setting on it because it depends on what's with the record company and the publishing company and stuff like that. I'm setting on it for a while. And it's not done yet. I mean, basically, to be honest with you, I ran out of money. So, and I mean, I'm financing it myself for this many years. So I might as well just keep rolling along okay. because I don't want to give that high of a percentage away, you know, for peanuts. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. But there's still a lot of work to do on it. Um... I would like for Dennis Ward to, we've talked a couple times about him doing like the mix and master on it, okay. but um, I'm not in a, you know, there's a bunch of stuff going on right now, mm -hmm. so, and, uh, but it'll, it's coming yet, yeah. I, I, before they close the casket, and, you know, <laughs> it, it's going to come out, so. Well, so, you know, in the meantime, you've reunited with Royal Hunt and you guys put out an album, Cast in Stone, earlier this year. Um, tell us about the new album. Um, I really, I mean, I love the new album. We were able to play, like, oh, we just come back from tour. I, I come home a couple weeks ago. Uh, Russia, Japan, Hungary, Greece, Denmark, and somewhere else. I'm missing somewhere. But okay. um, it was kind of a short tour, and we wanted to do it just to basically, you know, because we, we didn't want it to prolong or go any further. Um, as far as schedules wise, so we had those confirmed, and we just kind of compacted it in. But uh -huh. um, the album was—it's uh, one of I. It's got a little bit more of a raw edge to it, like getting back to. Oh, kind of you know. To me, it has a deep purple sound. It's mm -hmm. going back to kind of like the roots of the stuff that we used to listen to, or okay. well, we still do. Right. Um, uh, but like you know, million ways and. Um, um, Fistful is, you know, they're like two of my favorite tracks, and we were able to perform those live on this tour, so mm. had a blast doing that. And um, But, you know, the process of how it used to be since, you know, I rejoined Royal Hunt, um, I record all the vocals here, and I ship them off over okay. to Denmark, and I do that with any, you know, I've been on, on 45, 46 albums in my career, and a good portion of them happened here. Okay. Because now with... Pro Tools and the internet and trading files and WAV files and everything like yeah. it's really easy to just ship them off. So okay. you're saving on studio time, or you're, yeah, you're saving on studio right. time, flights, hotels, all that stuff. So um, the bad part about it is sometimes I'm up here in my studio till five o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. and I forget that I have to get up at like eight o'clock or something <laughs> like that, you know. But um, and the, the one thing I do miss about it, and we've talked about it um, about you know. The next time, quote unquote, the next time, um, you know, where I do, I am with them because I miss the, com the camaraderie, you know, sure. of working with. Like Dennis Ward and I, whenever we work together, we have a blast when we're working together. And I shouldn't just say him, but, you know, uh, him, Gary Verkamp, and just numerous other producers I've worked with. Mm -hmm. It's that banter back and forth. It's like, you know, um, you're able to bounce ideas off of each other, right. you know, which sometimes here, whenever I'm by myself... Yeah, I was going to say, what's collaboration like when you're here crazy. and everybody else is somewhere else, you know? Skype, lots of Skype right. calls, Skype videos, you know, you send MP3 samples over, you send, you know, just maybe a chorus, or you send a, uh, a verse or something like that, right. and he'll listen to it, but it, 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 it kind of prolongs it, but we're always under, we're always, always under time schedule, so... 
you know, it sometimes gets down to the wire where it's just like he'll, uh, he'll send me like little snippets and, and one track and all I do is I just fix them yeah. and then he just loads them up. And so, um, the collaboration is definitely a little bit more difficult, but we stay in touch and that's like with any project that I, that I work on and I do, mm -hmm. um, everybody has Skype and I have Skype here and, you yeah, know, technology I'm, certainly changed a lot, making it easier for people to mm -hmm. work remotely. So. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So, um, you know, we've been playing um, Million Ways to Die in rotation on WNJR locally here. And, and it's number uh, one, right? <laughs> it's the number one on your playlist. It's requested all the time. And, oh, people are calling all the time. We'll have to get you to do some liners to introduce it for us. So oh, that, we can know, do that. I'll make yeah. sure that you guys have some other music, too, to play. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know you guys, you know, have a short break right now, but you're going back out on the road in August. We saw that you're doing a festival in Spain mm -hmm. with um, some guys we just met up with uh, last month, um, Crazy Licks from Sweden, oh, yeah. which is a great band that will be on the show as well. Um, have you played this festival before? I don't even know how to pronounce it, so I'm kind of afraid to say what the name of it is. It's like Ricole or something like that. Yeah, um, there's yeah, there's a way to pronounce it. I'm not it's sure. Spanish that I'm. Yeah, Spanish. Right. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I, I have to even look and see who all's on yeah. the bill. I'm not even sure. I know we have a good time slot ourselves, and um, but it's not announced yet. But it's, it's like right now in the works. We should be doing a, one other festival in Romania, and then. Okay. Um, you know, like, that's not official yet, but uh, neither is us going to Israel. Hmm. So, yeah, that'll be a first wow. for us. Yeah, that'll be a first. But, yeah, we're going to try to pack a couple, you know, other shows in there. Okay. And hopefully in Spain, at least, I'm going to take a couple days off and just sit on the beach, drink mojitos <laughs> or something like that, you know. But, um, uh, gives us some backlight. And that's there right. Gives us some backlight <laughs> so it's not dark back there, you know. Secret but, tracks and progress here on the computer. Yeah, those are, yeah, you guys have they, they heard this song. They heard this song, so but it's it's, secret. it's not. It's definitely secret. There, it's not out there, but um, uh, yeah, it should be a good time. But yeah, we're gonna go out there, and I got some other things in the works. So okay, I wanted to ask you. You know, a while ago you were doing like vocal training for some people locally. And is that something you still do? Um. Uh, Unfortunately, no, but I am available to do it, but it's just, I think with a lot of the traveling and touring that I was doing was kind of getting into some other people's schedules. Yeah. And, you know, I understand the market, to, you know, these days. Um, it's very difficult, you know, either whether I was producing a local band or doing vocal training, because I think the count that I had with the people that I had in and out of here over a period of probably eight or nine years, maybe eight or ten years, yeah. um, I had over 120-some vocalists in here. Wow. So, um, I do like four hour blocks, you know, because you can't really, you know, by the time you're, you, you, some people charge a half an hour mm -hmm. or even an hour or something. It's like, right. by the time they get warmed up, it's like, well, it's time to go. go. Okay. <laughs> you know? Um, so I always, always do four hour blocks and you no, know, I, it was really good for a while, but it's, it's very difficult and I totally understand that. You know, people have, you know, day jobs and things like that. So, um, I mainly always work in the evenings anyhow, but, um, it's, you know, a lot of the bands, even whenever I was even just doing, like, either co-production or just producing the vocals or something, mm -hmm. you know, they'd have to go out and play four or five local shows to come up with money to spend one night in a right. studio or okay. spend two sessions with me, and I'm, I'm not that expensive, but, um, <laughs> you know, and it's, you know, it's that fine line between how far are you willing to stack your neck out, how much money yeah. you want to spend on your career, but... I would like to think that I helped a lot of people. I mean, I don't consider myself a... Well, I call you know I call myself a vocal coach, but I'm more of a kind of a troubleshooter, I guess. I mean, okay. I've been flown numerous places where um, you know, they call me saying, oh, we're having this major problem, we're under the gun, you know, can you fly in? And mm. I just have, like, certain tricks, I think, and I try to look at people's voices, take them for what they're worth, and work with what they have, because... You know, whenever you see a singer, they're struggling to do this or do that or something. You go like, that doesn't really feel right. Now, if they would spend six months with me in in the rehearsal studio and doing the coaching, I think we could get them to certain points. And then there's been other singers where I go like, I just don't think that's achievable. You know, that what you're trying to do. Okay. Um, so you focus on what are their strong points and you try to bring that out. No, there's a lot of 
there's a lot of just basic, simple things. I mean, breathing technique is huge, especially with, you know, matching with your vibrato or anything. So um, I'm, I'm very analytical whenever it comes to somebody's yeah. voice. You know, that's why... <laughs> That's why some people they hate to go to they hate to go to concerts with me because I'm I'm not bitching or complaining <laughs> or anything. I'm like I, I think to myself on a stream and go like, man, I would love to sit down and talk to them or go into the studio and work with them because I think and I listen for these things and uh -huh. I go, yeah, I mean I can help them there and here and here. I mean, and and um, my my track record as far as I know, I mean, was pretty much flawless out of everybody you know that was um, you know that would come into the studio mm -hmm. and would would work with me. Um, you know, because we were able to always achieve, we would set goals, we would set early goals too. And, um, you know, there was, there was a couple different singers that I worked with that, um, as an example, there was one girl that she sang only opera. Amazing, amazing, amazing opera voice, just absolutely beautiful. But she wanted to be a metal singer. She wanted to be a metal goddess, <laughs> you know, and, but she had never sung, uh, a country song or uh, um, a ballad or anything that yeah. you know she still delivered with that you know that voice mm -hmm. and we worked together for almost a year I think and um, she then progressed on and had her own had her own band for quite a while and stuff and mm -hmm. and it's more about emotion it's about emotion it's about really digging in you know yeah. whether you're a guitar player or you're a drummer or anything like that vocalist especially you got a really you got to dig in because you're selling. You're selling a song. You're selling yourself. You got to sell a show. I mean, right, you guys were just right. talking. You saw a couple bands. One in particular that we both like. I yeah. know these guys. You know that was Heat, and yeah. they deliver. I mean, they right, come out and they right. deliver. Yeah. And you got to sing from your crotch. You got to whatever. That was a big thing with like a lot of the vocal students mm -hmm. that I would work with. I'm like, you can't just sing with your diaphragm. You know, <laughs> I hate that term, sing with your diaphragm. You know, because if you need to, if you have to find it in your toes, your fingers, or you have to, it's a feeling. It's just a total feeling. So, that was one of the things too. Maybe I was a little bit more of an eclectic of a, a vocal coach or something okay. like that. But you got to dig in and, and and get what you want because you're selling a story to people and they're paying good money to come out and see you live. So. talking before you know we started the interview about you know getting back into music full time right it's and I, I did full time music for many 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 years mm -hmm. and um, I always still kind of kept you know still was able to, to keep rolling with music but um, after two thousand after September 11th happened then I had re uh, recertified as a paramedic so I ran as a as a mercy medical technician. So I ran as a medic for quite a few years, yeah. and I walked away about five years ago because that just got to be too much. But then, you know, you have kids growing up, and you know, everybody always asks, like, "Well, you know, why aren't you doing this or why aren't you do this?" And I'm like, "Well, because life happens." Right. You know, I mean, and the music business isn't the way it used to be at all. You know, so yes, you know, I mean, uh, um, you know, you work other jobs and things like right. that. Sometimes yeah. you have enough energy at night and sometimes you don't. And um, I would definitely, you know, there's a couple things that are in the works right now that could hopefully bring me back into the music business full time. So, mm -hmm. and it's really wild that I say that because, <laughs> I mean, literally, this is the, you know, the day be, you know, the, and Royal Hunt, they know, you know, they know basically where my head's been as far as, you know, the music business and then just with a lot of other personal things that are going on. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I was involved in an accident last September that's, that has, you know, still some long-lasting um, issues that are taking place or that are happening. So um, I need to watch my health and all that stuff, too. So, but right before the tour, man, I was just, I was going to quit. I was, I was done with the business. So um, I love performing. I love performing. I love writing. I love recording and everything mm -hmm. like that. But um, all the bullshit that goes with it is just kind of just wasn't panning out. Um, you know, that you have to look at things sometimes right. whenever you're through your life. But, um, you know, I've been very blessed and the voice is holding out and, and I still have the drive. So after this tour, 
now I'm all energized and oh. I got a couple projects in the works and all that stuff. So, um, but I've I've been very blessed over the years because I mean I've been traveling and touring for I think 27 or 28 years and I've been basically on stage since I was 14 years old. So um, I feel bad sometimes for a lot of the younger bands that are coming out. Um, you know, and I love seeing them and watch them, and they because they have those eyes that are you know like. Yeah. I'm going to be a rock star, <laughs> you know, and that is awesome. But even some of the bands that are they're getting some of the deals, you know, they're getting the record deals, but they're not the way they used to be. And the publishing and your, mm -hmm. your CD sales are, I just, you know, it's going to be so much harder for them to reinvent themselves, you know, each time. Because right, you basically, right. you have to reinvent yourself almost every album. You know, you yeah. still have your qualities of your previous albums and yeah. your your personalities and your characters right. and stuff like that but you still i mean you're only as good as your last album yeah. so if you can't if you can't exceed that then you know it's it's time to maybe move on or mm -hmm. try something else or right. um but you know it's it's you know you'll see some of these younger bands they're out there they're traveling and touring they're having a blast but what's going to happen in the next couple of years are they going to have the musicianship are they going to have that collaboration with other musicians that they're able to continue to keep yeah. going, you know. Yeah. Sorry, that was okay. a sidebar. That's okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time today, and we look forward to hearing what the next chapter is going to be once you get it figured out. You're very welcome. Thank yeah. you for coming.